Three, two, we're live! All right! Welcome, Very nice. Everyone. Hey, I am glad that you have tuned in tonight. Another lovely you know? uh, Wednesday evening. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy about how many people are already in here. That's amazing. We've been, the live chat has just been going crazy for the last, what, seven, eight minutes? You know, it's been pretty good. Definitely people there. It's definitely, pretty good. Definitely people. Yeah. So tonight we're going to start out with, we've got one of our barn owls that uh, their equipment is like trash. If it's even still on, on their anklets. But Michael, what do you so, mean by equipment? Yeah. What I mean is falconry furniture. Oh, furniture. Yes. The furniture that you put on falconry birds. You put couches on house. And love seats and definitely, you know, recliners. Uh so uh, Jenna has gone to get us a barn owl. A very upset barn owl. Oh, look at there. Okay. So who's, so, who's this? Um, let me see. This is, uh, oh, okay, so this is Pluto. Oh, yep. Pluto. So this is Pluto. So he has no furniture on. He's got no equipment on his legs. So she's going to have to hold him for a minute and just kind of keep him cool and quiet. Um, we're just going to jump in here because the owl is... But um, but before we do that, I want to tell you guys about the gift box that we're going to be giving away. Oh, another prize. Another prize. One, you're going to get this really cool Wildlife Command Center cup right here. And it's, these mugs work great. They hold all this types one, of This liquids. one tastes really good. So you'll be getting this mug. Yeah. But With you'll really be getting... The one that's in here. Oh, are you? Yeah. I thought you were going to give away yours. I, I didn't want to give away my DNA, too. They made too much money on that. <laughs> Can't be too careful. Yeah. Then you're going to get a Wildlife Command Center multi-tool. Yeah. Ooh. I need a woo button. It comes with a Phillips head screwdriver, a corkscrew. If you're a wine drinker, you know, the kind of wine I used to drink just screwed off. You know? <laughs> um, You'll you'll get a can opener Dark days. as well as a bottle opener. Now, if you don't know the difference between a can opener a and bottle a bottle opener. opener, then you are rich your whole life and privileged. No wonder that's never worked on cans. But when I was me. growing up and a little kid, we used these can openers like this to open up pork and beans because they didn't make pork. What was today. the great difference? Yeah. It, it was amazing. And then you'll get the super sharp. So whatever you do, don't cut yourself. You're gonna get that, and then you'll get a bag of amazing wildlife command center dark roast. It is delicious. It is the most delicious. And hey, real quick note: I updated our link tree. Oh, nice! So if you click on the link in the description, if you're mm -hmm. wanting to support wildlife command center or animals, and raptor rescue, my life, Inc. You know, <laughs> you can check out our link tree. It's got our coffee link. It's got our merch store. It's got our website. Mm. Your wonderful, wonderful nuisance wildlife control services. Perfect control services. But check it out. All of our social services. services in one place. And there's two more things they get in the prize box. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was still going on. You get a Wildlife <laughs> Command Center cleanup napkin. And I forgot to pull out the challenge coin. And there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> wait, there's there's more. more. You should give them a sticker too, Michael. <laughs> yes. Should we give them a sticker? I love our stickers. I got one on my laptop. Bam, Would you thanks. look at that? This is a Wildlife Command Center laptop. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I will. Um, we will throw in a sticker as well. So this is going to be great. This so is going to be awesome. I, I still, I know I talked about this last slide, but I still don't want Michael to do his rant on coffee. But our coffee is made by a small batch roaster. And there is a long backstory, which we'll probably do a video on the channel ahead about it. Uh, but it's delicious. And I'm not a dark roast coffee person, but it made me a believer. You know, it did the same thing to me as well, because I was always hooked on like Starbucks and, you know, whatever is wonderful. Yeah. But I have completely switched over to that. Every hey, morning. she's converted. I am converted. <laughs> All right. Very nice. All right. So <clears throat> let's get into it. <laughs> uh, we need to put some anklets on this bird right here. Your discretion. So what there's, I'm gonna... there's a lot of dogs and people and owls here. so This is going to be a fairly chaotic live. But you know what I say? The more chaotic, the more fun. You know? The more chaos, um, the more fun. So for this, uh, Jenna, ahead of time, made these really cool anklets. 
to go on the bird. You know, she did a fine job too. I mean, look at the craftsmanship on that. I mean, this is like old world, you know, European craftsmanship here. I, um, I learned from that 13 year old girl from Mongolia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you guys didn't know, if y'all have never heard our story of how falconry began, it all began years and years, over 3,000 years ago in Mongolia. It's a little 13 year old Mongolian. And she, I'm just going to save the story for you. But it's good. Um, she really led me on what, there. Oh, what we really, I really <laughs> thought you were going into it. I was like, he's not going to talk about the coffee, but he's going to do the whole falconry bit right now. Yeah, but you know, hey, if, if you if y'all want to see a video on how falconry began, in my mind, I've been given a vision of how falconry began, and I've got a story for you of, it, of how it happened. Anyway, right now we need to get the uh, anklets on this owl. So what I'm going to need you to do is turn him over and hold him like a little football. We, we've got a lot of friendly owls. Well, mainly Cricket. <laughs> I'm being honest. This is Cricket's brother. This is Cricket's brother, but he is not so people friendly. So uh, yeah. Jenna's so, doing wonderful. Right now. Let, me, let me rephrase this. It is Cricket's full brother, but it's her older brother from a year before. And what we did was we let the parents raise him. And so he is um, not as calm and malleable with people as Cricket is. So, all right. So let me see if I can help you here. I'm probably going to have you um, grab the other foot right there and just kind of hold that foot like that. Got it. Kind of down like this. You're going to have to talk up a little bit too since you had this turn, Michael. All right, so you'll stand right like that. Perfect. Is that perfect? It's great. Okay, so what I've got to do, so his his ID band is right here. So I need to put this where that little bitty tiny hole is at the top, so that goes this way. And I've got to get this through there without getting footed. Now I'll tell you, being footed by these uh, barn owls is no fun because these guys have the sharpest, most needle-like <laughs> talon ever. Some people are mentioning, mentioning a blurry screen currently. I will say I'm not receiving any warnings on our end, so maybe just it's refreshing your page. Yeah, it's great now. Thank you, internet. Yay. Thank you, 2023. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we've got the anklet on now. So what I did is I, I, I pulled his ID band down, his federal ID band, put the anklet on right here. I've got the hole at the top because the owl's upside down. And uh, I'm just gonna put a little stay on here because this equipment is probably not gonna have, um, we'll, we'll probably never put a Jess on this anklet, but if we need to catch him up for veterinary purposes, we would need to put a, a, a Jess on here. And I want to have some means of to secure to secure them. But I also want it to stay flexible enough so I can take it off. So that's why I don't want to put permanent cuffs on. I'm just going to secure this. Let me get in this drawer right here. Or wire dikes so it makes a nice voila one foot done he did i need you to i guess i need to help oh. i like to Ooh, i like to face. watch for my screen don't get that in the face yeah. yeah he's he's got the other one <laughs> Hey, Michael, where do snowy owls live? Snowy owls live up north. Um, interesting fact. In the last few years, snowy owls have been um, coming further and further south in the wintertime. We get a couple snowy owls in St. Louis even. Migrate down. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it wasn't long ago that somebody was reporting the snowy, snowy owl on the bird watching groups. Whoa, we got Alex Ferro sent a super chat. Hey, Alex. Hey. 
So, so did Alex have a question that he uh, wanted to get up front? Alex, you're welcome to ask a question. We'd love to push that up to the front for you. But thanks for supporting Wildlife Command Center. Yeah. It means a lot. Hey, we really do, Alex. And another thing, too, like all of that is going to go to our raptor rescue efforts. And that is enough to rescue two birds. Thank so you. We really appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm trying to manipulate this so that I don't get footed, but that I can get that piece of uh, leather equipment through there. Almost got it. A fun fact, Pluto, this guy right here, did go with us to a Comic-Con last year. And so he went to an event and he did, he did okay. He did okay. <laughs> Just, okay. Just okay. Not as good as Cricket does, but you know. Because Pluto gets a look, I'm, I'm expecting him to grab me at any second. I'm like shaking because I don't know, y'all can't really see how needle sharp those talons are, but I mean, they just go through you like butter, man. I mean, it's just crazy how sharp these barn owls talons are. No wonder mice can't get away from them. As uh, they're dealing with the talons of this owl, I'd uh, just like to remind everyone to like the live. We currently have 25 people watching. Yay! Yay! Uh, 14 <laughs> likes, though, so that means that you can help us improve the likes on this live by uh, smashing that button. Yeah. <laughs> And if you're live on our TikTok. The goat button's growing on me. I don't know. I hated this when you first brought this in. I was like, <laughs> I love the goat button. Tap, tap, tap. Why is there a goat here? It makes me think of the Thor Love and Thunder. The Absolutely. Goat. If you've been on my TikTok, Bare Hands Baran, um, I, uh, I posted that little, I kind of snipped it out a little bit of the, the movie there and posted the goats and it's great. <laughs> I love it. All right, so we got them all set up. So now he's got a nice, fresh pair of anklets. You guys did wonderful and, like in the video. Thank you. And he uh, he is no worse for wear. You can probably hold. You want to put that other glove on real quick? Going to have an owl flying around here in a second. Oh, I got it. And just be careful with the leg coming out. It's ready. Stop. Gravy. Come here. <laughs> That is what a barn owl sounds like. Mm -hmm. How old is Pluto? Sorry, I had to turn my back, but I had to make sure that we uh, did a safe maneuver. Another super chat. Oh, nice. <laughs> Hear this. Here, this is kind of newer to the channel, but you know, watching a whole bunch. I don't know if it's a she, she person. Uh, but thanks. Really appreciate Good you morning. watching and commenting. You've been uh, really adding a lot to the channel, and thanks for the super chat. Oh, yeah. Talk about how Banshee got the name Banshee. Hey! <laughs> oh, boy, that owl poop really poop. smells bad. The owl, yeah, I'm sure. I was going to mention it. But the Why don't owl, you go put, the put owl him poops. back out there? He's good to go. <laughs> I'll clean up the owl poop. The owl, owl, owl. Owl. Oh, tells a story. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to hear grandma. more embarrassing childhood stories about me? Sure. There's a lot of poop off to my right. Otherwise, I would uh, float over to this area, but I can't right now. Uh, Michael, what's on your mind? What do you want me to talk about? <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I was, I'm always interested is in how you found Gravy, your dog, because he's such a cool looking dog. Oh, Gravy, my dog. A lot of you guys are uh, liking Gravy on the channel. He's always around here. Just uh, being a dog. Come here, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to leave that moment off the live. But uh, I, he was a rescue from the APA locally in St. Louis. Uh, I do like the idea of rescuing dogs. I've been on the receiving side of good dog situations and bad dog situations in regards to rescue side. And uh, luckily, he's worked out really well. I, I will say from my personal experience, if you're going to rescue a dog, rescue it as a puppy. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, what, what do people say? They get to ruin their own kid instead of <laughs> taking someone else's. So Yeah, exactly. But he, he, he's been desensitized <laughs> since a really young age. So we get a lot of comment grief. Yeah, this is gravy. Hi, gravy. Uh, like some people are like, why would you put that snake next to that dog or next to that bird? But 
since he's been a little puppy, he's lived here. So he's pretty much used to every single weird critter you possibly could run into. Hey, and if you're just jumping on the live, let's talk about the Wildlife Command Center prize box that we're going to give away, which we have not discussed what we're going to do to do the giveaway yet, because we haven't discussed it either. But you're going to get a Wildlife Command Center sticker. You'll get a Wildlife Command Center napkin. The best part is a Wildlife Command Center challenge coin that was... Um, you know, I made this after the challenge coin for my submarine, the USS MG Vallejo. You will get a multi-tool, Wildlife Command Center multi-tool. It'll come in a little box. And a whole jar of pinto beans. Bush is best. Bush is best. Oh, it's not We're gonna, not going to get that. Not it won't the box. fit in here. So, sorry. And then you will get a full bag of Wildlife Command Center dark roast. And you're going to get this Wildlife Command Center coffee. Which, by the way, the coffee mugs. Is, I like that. That's is the up. this is the last one I have of the coffee mugs? Yeah, this is the last coffee mug that has never been drank out of. Like we got a couple of them floating around the office that we drink out of. Yeah, I like them. You give that real talk Pretty show. Pretty good. Feel. I know, man. It's like you get that real talk show feel. Cool, cool. You know, oh, I was gonna give an owl fact. I can't wait. I've been waiting this whole time. So barn owls, 95% of their diet are rodents and mostly field mice and specifically meadow voles. Like that is what they eat the most. And they eat a ton of them. And when I say a ton of them, I mean a barn owl, one barn owl can easily eat 10 of these a night. Of mice, mices? Of meadow voles. Mice, mices, meadow voles, whatever. Okay. And whenever they have young, a parent barn owl will catch 20 to 25 mice a night to feed their young. And that's an, a, just an astronomical number. Thank you, owls. Yeah, the owls definitely help out. And if you find an owl pellet, a lot of times you can uh, dissolve it in water and put together a whole skeleton of the mouse because they don't digest the bones. I did that, the one year Boy Scouts. Oh yeah. I know you're big into the Eagle mm -hmm. Scouts and whatnot. So Do you like the Eagle Scouts? I did one year of Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. I got two Pinewood Derby uh, trophies. Nice. My dad made the Pinewood Derby, you know, cause it's always the dads that are making. Well, it's except like with my kids. I only, <laughs> I only, I only did the axles and the wheels. Okay, well my dad did everything. And it definitely was, it didn't win like a, a looks competition because it was just one was blue and one was red. <laughs> one was my brother's and, and one was mine. And for some reason, it was the same car my dad made, but mine flew down the track and my brother's went nowhere. Oh, <laughs> I cool. I don't know what happened. That's so, the extent of it. So, so Chance won the, the Pinewood Derby Grand Champion like four years in a row. Yeah, the big trophy. You put knots on and these? All, no, the only thing I did was I did axles and wheels. Like, that's the only thing I did. But I went through a lot of trouble. Like, I would buy nine packs of Pinewood Derby wheels. And each wheel has a number on it from which die cast it came out of. So I would match up all the numbers so that I have four wheels from the same die cast. Wow. Yeah. That's something. That's, it was. That's the information many of you have been waiting to hear on this. Time. <laughs> exactly. You never, you never know what kind of good stuff you can come up with. But we were into graphite and I polished those axles and I polished those wheels. Man. Super chat! Super chat! It's Alex again. Hey, Alex. Awesome. One more go. So, so um, I don't really understand it super chat that much well the super chat just gives the audience an opportunity to support the channel oh good i like support you know i don't know if you know this but you spend a lot of money on me and everything else around here and uh it's really helpful when the viewing audience can support wildlife command center and the animals well also we we <laughs> buy a lot of frozen rodents from rodent pro and uh, frozen rodents are expensive they are you know <laughs> but they're safer for the animals they, yeah. they really are safer for the animals um that's cool and does he get to ask a question or he just made a statement? He said, hey, love you guys. You. All of you are awesome people. Alex, oh, you're awesome you. too. Yep. I guess I'll, take, I'll accept the compliment. You'll accept, <laughs> I'll accept it. it. Cool. Um, but you know, we're on the subject of rodents. Oh, 
Oh, and oh, oh boy, I know it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait and, for the, you guys are in for a treat. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So you know, about four years ago, I took a trip to New York City whenever I was running the, the festival circuit for a documentary that I did, which you can watch if you go to rodents of unusual size TV. It's a really it's a really good documentary. Like it's really interesting because it's Louisiana culture. You know, it's all based in New Orleans. Super professional. The crew is great. Like, yep. They really did a good job. They did an excellent job. Well, we went up to Washington. Uh, we, we went up to Washington Square in New York City because we were invited there for the film festival. And uh, I was doing Q&A. But anyway, uh, between something at, at night, uh, somebody said, hey, do you want to go see the rats in New York City? And of course, you know what I said. <laughs> I was like, not only do I want to see them, I want to go catch one, you know. Um, however, my wife, Bonnie, my sweet wife, Bonnie, she was with me. And uh, she restrained me from catching a rat, like physically. She grabbed me by the back of the jacket and she goes, don't you dare embarrass me like that. And so I didn't actually catch a rat. But it brings up an interesting subject because there is a misidentification going on in New York City. Because a lot of people think that these big old huge New York City sewer rats are rats but they're not no they're, they're muskrats rats. they're muskrats well th technically that's a rat right muskrat? it's got rat in the name of it but they're nowhere close they're not even the same species of rats huh. you know um so i see a whole lot of videos you know people send me videos all the time and so i see these videos all the time and they're like look at this huge new york city street rat and i watch it and i'm like that's not a rat that's a muskrat which is not a rat. A muskrat is more closely related to a nutria or a beaver than it is a rat, especially an old world rat, which is mostly what New York has, the old world brown rat. Um, but if you guys have never seen what I'm talking about, it just so happens that I have a great example. I can't wait to see the muskrat. Uh, I wanted to get to a real quick question, though. Okay. It's something that sure. uh, you, you're you're passionate about. That and means Bonnie, I got to stop. And Bonnie also asked me to get to it. So oh, sure. okay. Uh, but Mark, he wrote in, uh, I'm in England mm -hmm. and thinking about getting into falconry and was thinking of a male Harris hawk. Excellent any, choice. Any questions? Excellent Our choice. Yeah. Excellent choice. Uh, so first off, you are you are lucky that you are in England because you know Europe is where falconry really got its feet, its legs. You know the sport of kings, but a male Harris hawk would be perfect in that type of environment because you have so much more quarry that you could pursue with it. You know a male Harris hawk can catch everything from feral pigeons to those big big uh, rabbits that you got, um, the brown hair, the the blue hair which are a little bit different than our Langamores over hair. here. You know, I don't think there's a purple hair. Oh, I, There's a brown hair and there's a blue hair. I know for a fact, but uh, male hair socks are completely capable of catching that. They're, they're smaller in nature. So they, they have less space requirement, but they're super, super social. And so not only could it be a great falconry bird for you, but it can be a great social interacting uh, uh, animal that you could have like, and I'm staying away from the word pet, you know, because it's definitely a weapon, but it's a very, it's a very social animal that you could really have a good relationship with. So yeah, I would encourage you to get a Mel Harris. Hawk. Michael loves Harris. Hawks, I do love it. So no, no qualms from him on that whatsoever. Yep, absolutely. Maybe a little difficult in England. Mm -mm. No, easy to get a hold of. Very easy have, and cheaper than in the United probably States. Have breeding programs over there. They do have breeding programs over there. So um, definitely get you a good sponsor. You know, there's plenty, there's so many more falconry schools in England and, and Europe in general. Um, so you can get a lot of good training through that. You can watch all of our videos on falconry. It gives We've you a like great, a more westernized version. Great playlist on falconry. I'm we, sure he's probably really picked up on that already. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I would encourage that. That would be a great, a great first, cho well, first go, choice. Go get this. Uh, before, the before I get it, okay. <laughs> just want to preface it. You know, at Wildlife Command Center, we do believe in... Uh, recycle, reuse. 
all the way from our aluminum trash can for aluminum cans uh, to if we see a, a squirrel get hit on the side of the road, we're probably like, er, pull over, stop, and we're going to use that for food. We're going to reuse that animal that that, uh, that got killed. So, um, so for educational purposes, we've got a muskrat. We have a muskrat, and he is not alive. Okay. Yeah. So I want to show you the difference between a muskrat and a sewer rat. Because they're way two different animals. There's two different things. So if you guys have questions as I'm going through this, y'all will have to stop me. He'll hit that little button and I will cease for a moment. So let me go get another super, super chat. Here's this again. Super kind. You guys are great. You guys are amazing. I appreciate that. Um, so while I do that, I'm going to let Jenna slide in here. And she's going to tell it'd us. It'd be wonderful if one of our viewing audience members could stop the dogs from uh, play fighting in the background and knocking the camera. Uh, so. Okay, well, you know, so the secondary live is not as important as the main webcam getting knocked over. What do you want me to do, Michael? What am I doing? Hi, Jenna. Hi, Cole. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Jenna. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Okay. Great. Can't awesome. wait to hear this. It's wonderful. So uh, I do the hawk talks and- You look these. super short right now. I don't know why. It just, Is that I, better? I'm, I'm sitting down here as tall as me. I don't think I ever noticed that. Okay, sorry, I interrupted you. Continue. I'm fun size. Yeah, fun size. <laughs> hey, so you know how we were talking about like boys, the help Boy Scouts and all that stuff? Yeah, Boy Scouts. Did you know that I was a Girl Scout? I did not. I Yes, and I, I got kicked out by the troop leader. I I've, I've ne never was a Girl Scout, but I've eaten a couple brownies. Oh, that's from without uh -oh. a paddle. You stole that. I know. But yeah, I got, I got kicked out uh, by the troop leader who just happened to be my mom. Because all I cared about was snack time. So, um, yeah, so at the... <laughs> <laughs> what was the Harris Hawk story? So the Harris Hawk story is... Um... Don't make this weird, Hi. Michael. <laughs> Hello, my pet. Oh, we'll continue the story. Some other time. Okay, well, the next intervention. <laughs> that took so long to get to the Harris Hawk story. Ah, sorry. We're going to jump into muskrats. Oh, so, so I watch a lot of videos. People send me videos all the time. Look at the size of this street rat. And I look at it and I'm like, that's not, that's, no, that's not a New York City street rat. That's a muskrat. And you see a lot of it. I even saw one very recently where this lady's like, um, so I subscribed to this uh, Facebook. Uh, group that's called uh call a hearse i'm about to pet that thing and uh and sure enough this lady was in new york and she had a muskrat cornered and she's like look at the size of this rat this new york city street rat and uh i'm watching i'm like that is not a street rat that is a um, muskrat <laughs> and so sure enough she went to pet it and i mean it bit her like really good because these things have teeth like miniature beavers you know and it's crazy but anyway i wanted to show y'all what a muskrat looks like. This is going to be a uh, Harris Hawk dinner for tomorrow. That's where we're going to repurpose this. Mm. But um, in the fur trade back in the 1940s, this was one of the most sought after furs, muskrat fur. It's very, very dense, super, super soft, and it rivals beaver. But then in the 1940s, um, especially down in Louisiana, people started catching an animal very similar to this, but it was 12 times the size of this and they found out they were catching nutria and so a nutria is a 25 pound semi-aquatic rat from argentina that is loose in louisiana and if you want to see more about that go to rodents of unusual size tv but anyway this is the this is a muskrat and this is what i see the most when people are sending uh videos of these huge gigantic uh new york city rats but here's the difference uh, these guys are semi-aquatic, which means they live most of their life in the water. Uh, they sleep on dry land or in their huts. But in New York City, these guys actually live inside the sewer water, the drains, that is water. Regular rats live on the outside edge of the sewer uh, tunnels, but they never live in the water. And this is what people are seeing. And to give you an idea of how the difference in size... Let me see one of our, our pet rats. Where's Aladdin? Where, where is Aladdin? 
You know, well, Aladdin was a street some, rat. Someone asked if these are good eaten. And I know you mentioned that these guys are vegetarians. Yeah, so these, so the meat is really, really good. And, um, you know, when the North Korean zombies attack and uh, we all have to uh, deal with the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. I'll be eating me some mustard. You're here. You're here. All right. So, so yeah, this Aladdin. is Aladdin. Aladdin is a true street rat. Okay. Um, and he's, he's, he's one of our domestic rats, but this is like a hefty rat. He weighs probably a little bit more than a pound. Yeah, it is. But look, look how small he is compared to the, uh, the nutria. I mean the, uh, the muskrat. Getting weird. So this kind of gives you a size and can they see this on the, on the video? They can see okay. it all. <laughs> Every bit. So this is the size of a, of a muskrat. And this is the size of, I don't know that many New York City rats get this big, but the brown rats in uh, in, in New York City are sizable. Well, the, the tails are very different. Now you're telling me yes. about the tail yes. on uh, so, muskrats. So as you see, he's got a very rounded tail. All right. And the muskrat, because it spends so much time in the water, it has a flat tail like a rudder. So it can swim and change directions as it's swimming. Now it doesn't have webbed feet per se, but it does have really wide spread out feet like that. And, uh, and they've got these little fringes on here for, for whenever they're swimming. But anyway, that's the difference between what a lot of people think is a New York City, huge New York City rat and what a regular um, domestic rat or a brown rat might look like in size comparison. Whew, man, he's pooping and it <laughs> smells bad. All right. Poop, watch your foot. I just dropped some right there for you. Thanks. There's a whole bunch of Here you Merry go, Mary. Christmas. So has anybody got any questions about Aladdin? Uh, <laughs> I think we're pretty I got off speed here, so. Awesome. <laughs> Why? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jenna tell the story of Mel Harris Hawk. Do we, do we want to talk about what we're gonna be doing? Um, all right. So at the St. Louis Renaissance Fair, I do the hawk talk, and I take the Harris Hawks down with me, and I tell this beautiful romantic story of how the master falconer falls in love with the baker's daughter. And it takes like 20 minutes to tell the story. There's a happy ending. There's education about it, and you know I pull people out from the crowd. So the one guy gets to be the king, one guy's falconer, one guy's the the baker's daughter, and it's I don't know. Everybody applauds at the end, so I guess I guess they're okay with it. But it's fun. It's good. She's so. wonderful in front of an audience. Can't wait for you to do the hawk talk for everyone on live ahead. Go get cricket. Oh. Getting cricket? Yeah, go get cricket. Okay, well. I just feel like go we ahead and should, put this off to the side. Then I guess I, I just feel like well, I just feel like we had. Uh, no, it's fine. This is your show, you know. I, I just feel like we had, um, you know, we had Pluto out here, and he's not very personable, and he's so not. I felt like our our audience wanted to see cricket. But mm -hmm. but first, before we do that, I want to show everybody what Cole did. Like he really cleaned up and painted our twenty five pound weight. Oh my gosh, Bonnie, I did not lift twenty five pounds. Just, I didn't. <laughs> Um, optical illusion. Yeah, this is actually foam. It's no, foam. It's yeah. not a real weight, but uh, yeah, it is painted. It looks nice. It's great. Yeah. So, anyway. thanks for noticing, Michael. I, I did I notice, notice right, away. right away. I love when he notices things like that. So this is cricket, and uh, and cricket is uh, definitely one of our more personable owls. She uh she loves to be scratched right here on the head. She loves head scratches. She does. Am I in her eyeball? Yeah. The other one. Yeah. And uh so so this is this is a generalized size of what the North American uh barn owl looks like. You know, they they're about half a pound. That's about all she weighs is half a pound. You know, they got wing spread about 32 inches, you know, and uh, they have these really sharp hooked beaks right here that are really good for catching mice. And they have incredibly sharp eyes, which uh, they use to find mice, and they are quiet. 
I mean, they are perfectly quiet. I posted a, a, a video live that they did where they tested a falcon, a pigeon, and a barn owl over these highly sensitive microphones. And it's amazing because the pigeon was very, very loud. I saw that same video. The falcon was even, at least as loud. And then the barn owl goes over and it's like nothing. Like not even a blip on the electronic readout. But you see how curious she is and just lovable. I mean, how can you not like that? You want to hit this? <laughs> nope. What was that? <laughs> what? She's just like, <laughs> what is that? All right. So we got a surprise for y'all. Um, do we? Yeah, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Can't wait to find out what it is. Somebody bring me a post-it note. A post-it note? I didn't, I don't know about this. You really don't. I think we I was, didn't talk about it. Was I eating dinner? I don't know. Watch the leg of my tripod. Okay, now I would, I require a writing utensil. Preferably ink. And then, if you would, I'd love one of those envelopes. Some people say envelope. Some people say envelope. I'm an envelope guy. I'm a... I'm an envelope, an envelope. Um, 